Hey guys, Mike here. Um, we are gonna be priming my dreadnought um, using Vallejo Game Color, Gory Red. Um, reason being, I like using Vallejo paints. Um, I have all sorts of paints here, um, but I especially like using Vallejo paints with my airbrush. I actually have lots of um, model air paints, but model air is mainly geared towards scale models, so they don't really have these nice um, wargamer friendly colours. So And plus, it means I can show you how to thin paint or how I do them. So we're going to just prime straight with gold red onto the plastic. Brilliant thing we can do with airbrushes. Rather than uh, have to go outside and use primer cans and never really know how good they're going to be, how it's going to come up, I pretty much just prime all my models with straight acrylic paint. So yeah, we need to thin this. So you can use water, I've used water uh, plenty of times. You can also use thinner. Um, this is the Vallejo's thinner, so this is what I'm going to use for this. Um, when using your airbrush, make sure you put the thinner in first. Um, if you put the acrylic paint in, when you put your thinner in afterwards and give it a stir and stuff, there's still going to be the thick acrylic paint right in the nozzle of your airbrush and your airbrush might have difficulty trying to spray that out and then you'll clog up and it, it, just don't do it, just put your finger in first. Um, with this paint I tend to do a five parts thinner to four parts paint ratio or just one to one, it's pretty good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally count drops in, from this thinner bowl um, into the paint cup. Okay, that's uh, might be a bit too much. Um, about 50 drops of thinner. So there's going to be a lot of paint going in it. In fact, that's probably too much. Oh, we'll, we'll see. Here we go. And next step, when you've uh, put everything into the cork up, as you can see. It's all white at the moment, so it's basically just the thin of the paint or something. Is um, to to stir the crap out of this. Um, if you see what I'm doing here, I'm using a cocktail stick, and I'm sort of just stabbing it into the one. Um, that tends to work quite well. When I'm trying to mix the paint and then stir it and then stab again, just keep at it until the colour comes out. So it's not just milky white, it's kind of, it is the gory red colour. And if you, uh, if you can see, it's, it's like people usually say, like you want to thin it about the consistency of milk. I'd say this is about the consistency of milk. There you go. It's about done. And um yeah, I'm just going to test spray, check it's coming out alright, and here we go, just going to go straight onto the model. Now, I'm going to spray from about this distance, um, get too close, you'll just flood the paint, get too far away, the paint will dry in the air before it reaches the model and you get this kind of dusty appearance, it's, it's not good. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it about this distance and I'm not going to pull all the way back, I just want to sort of almost dust the paint on the first because I'm going straight out to plastic and then afterwards I'll just do another coat. So then if you can get from this angle. I was debating whether I want to do prime in black first and then do the red on top. But I did that with the uh, Blood Angel Battle Force and um, it actually, it, you know, it takes up, even with using an airbrush, doing it over a straight black, it can take a, quite a few coats to get um, enough the nice red colour through. And really, most of the black um, vanished in the end. Anyway, I, was, I, was, I did it black so that um, hopefully some of the black would retain in the recesses. But um, it didn't come out that well, so maybe a bit of a wasted step. As you can see, I'm constantly moving the uh, the model and spraying in different areas. I don't want to keep spraying over the area. Once you see the, sur the surface of the plastic get wet, 
and shiny, you know, move on to a different area. If there's nowhere to, to move to, so it's all wet, then just cut your airbrush to air and, and blow air on top instead to um, help dry the paint. That's the air, uh, the great thing about a uh, dual action airbrush. So you can do that. Now, ideally, I should be using my uh, spray brief, I mean, but it's a bit loud. To be able to hear my voice, and uh, it's actually quite late as well, so I don't want to open the window to get the, uh, the, uh, the pipe out the back of the spray out the window. It'll be cold. And I'll just put it with some acrylic in the lungs for the time being. As you can see, I've pretty much nearly covered most of the model. Um, still some more to go. Skip ahead until uh, this is done. So I've just finished priming um, both the arms and the uh, not in red. See, I've just used the clamp to hold on to them for the time being. It looks pretty good already. Um, great thing about an airbrush, the finish on this red is just super smooth. You know. You can't get better than that really. Um, so the next step would be to load up the a blood red colour using game colour bloody red and do the same thing. But this time round we're gonna be hitting the model from you know this kind of angle and higher so that some of the darker red remains on the sides surfaces and then you'll get a nice kind of like Shaded effect, natural shaded effect, very quick to do. So I'm just going to um, load this up and I'll be back in a sec. So just loaded up the airbrush, I'm just going to blow out the other colour so we start to see the blood red. There we go. And then, um, yeah, so the, the idea is to do the same thing we just did. Just getting it from these kind of angles. I'm uh, doing this with the airbrush, be careful when doing this because it's very easy to get the paint to slosh out and you don't want that. So yeah, I'm just going to um, probably fast forward this bit, but just so you can see how it comes along. I'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, I've uh, just finished spraying the blood red and I hope you can pick this up, but um, uh, it's a bit difficult to see. Um, but the underside is still dark red, you might be able to see it there on this piece. 
Um, so there is the gory red colour. Hand sprayed there. And then on top you've got the blood red colour. And so you get this nice sort of gradient, especially around round parts like this, where it's bloody red on top and gory red on the bottom. It's pretty hard to see because uh, the light is actually sort of actually casting the shadow there, but if um you turn upside down there. No. But in any case, that's a really quick way to um shade a model. It's post shading. Um so the base coat is all nicely just super smooth and it's got these nice sort of gradations. I mean you could keep pushing the highlight colours, you could add a bit of um, yellow to the red maybe. But you gotta be careful doing that because you might accidentally push it, say more orange, and if you hit it from just above on the top, um it might just make the whole model look a bit orange overall. So usually for red I just do those two highlights and then just edge highlight the rest. It's a very subtle effect, it's hard to pick up on camera, but um you'll see it in, in pictures and photographs. So yeah, uh, stay tuned and I will begin the next tutorial at some point soon where we gloss coat and then apply washes and paint washes and how to clean up afterwards. Um, so yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy these kind of videos and I'll, um, any advice, any comments, critiques, really appreciated. And for the time being, take these guys, I'll see you later.